a few things about Scorpion's wife's garden implement. The video should be out now or you wouldn't be seeing this. And so I would recommend that you go watch that first. It's kind of a more of a high-end production than this. But that video was not so much a how-to. It was more about entertainment. And so I'd like to clarify a few points here in case for whatever reason you want to build one. The build video centers around a very specific object. It's a prop replica of a weapon used by the protagonist, which at one time was a garden implement of the protagonist's wife. I have not seen the film, and so I was working with just a seven minute preview of the film, and there were only a few clips of the object, so cut me a break if you know, if it was off at all, I was working with very limited information. But I tried as much as I could to capture the precise shape, and I went through quite a number of revisions to arrive at this drawing, which will be available to you in the description. One challenge was about how to scale it. I mean, how big is this? We're just watching a movie frame. And so what we did was I used my wife, has a model and she put her thumb through it and we kind of sized it to that. But another suspicion I had was that the prop makers used a washer and so this is a rather common sized washer. My first thought was that I'll weld this all into one but it turned out that for simplicity's sake I ended up not doing that. Which also, speaking of welding, if you look at this screen capture right here the washer looks almost as though it were ribbed, and I did consider laying a little weld on there just to make it look as though it were yanked really hard. But it, I ended up not doing it because I didn't want to risk destroying the finish. This is the material that I started with, and uh, I blew it, for lack of a better term. You heat it up and dunk, you know, douse it in some oil, and then it takes on this black matte appearance. It's pretty awesome. Watch the video. But I had figured if I put a weld on this, then it really has a good chance of marking the finish, and I might not be able to hide it. So it was just too high risk since I had so much invested in the video. If you'll note here, this side is sandblasted, that side is not. And so any even seemingly minor textural difference ends up giving you a different effect. Here are a couple scrap pieces of maple. It's leftover stuff from uh, that crap I milled uh, about a year ago. And I think I'm going to use this for the handle, tentatively at least. It has kind of a dirty color and I like that. Notice the way these pieces of maple bookend. I know it's not supposed to be evident that this is wood necessarily, but the woodworker in me can't help but take some pride in the woodwork. Also in case I forget, forgot to mention, from tip to tip, scale this drawing to 13 inches if you want to duplicate the one that I made. If you watch in the video, I cut the handle back because this is the screen capture size and I need to accommodate the, for the thickness of the wooden handle. You'll note that's what the red line is on, on the updated drawing. I wasn't certain about doing this at first because I wanted to see how much strength the steel would have. I know it's just a screen prop, but I still wanted to use it as a functional garden implement. I don't like to make things just for the sake of appearances out of focus to encourage you to go watch the actual video. Right now I have reasonable confidence that it's going to turn out nicely. Uh, I want to mention that if having looked at an unreasonable amount of screen captures, I think that they actually had two props. I think there were two of them. Another thing, I don't think the handle was wood. I think it was some kind of wrap, like as in masking tape. I think it was that, I would think it was done that, well, cheaply. 
I mean, give them a break. They're prop makers. They just need to make it look good. They don't actually have to have it function. And so my own build had to take kind of special considerations about how to make it. And to that end, I think the process might leave some people a little bit disappointed because it might not be traditional. But the finished product pleased me and satisfied, at least to some reasonable degree, accuracy with respect to the all of the screen captures that I had access to. Looking over the screen captures from the front, the handle seems to be wood until you look at it from the side. But when you really start to compare them in a graphics editor and you start to overlay one on top of the other, then you can start to see some patterns emerge. Like for one, the handle is not this handle design is not entirely symmetrical, which led me to believe that it shifted by being twisted around, which is more evidence that it was probably just masking tape with pencil on it. Or marker. Probably marker. I don't think they went through the trouble to use a wood burner. I didn't actually see the film, so maybe the movie completely sucked. But that doesn't take anything away from how well designed that preview was. So this object retains some level of coolness for me, no matter what. In case you're wondering, it balances right at about 409 grams. A note about metal cutting discs. I didn't want to include this bit in the main video because of all the safety lecturing but sometimes it's unavoidable that they'll start to fray around the outside perimeter. Let me show you how I dress these up, but of course do it at your own risk. You know me well enough by now to realize that I don't lecture safety stuff, but there are certain tools like an angle grinder, a bench grinder, and especially a wire wheel. Oh, and also a rotary tool like a Dremel. You should always wear safety glasses with those. And in this case, it's doubly so. What I do is I run the cutting disc at an angle, at a really steep angle, just like so. Yes, the angle grinder is spinning, and yes, this is spinning. And both wheels true themselves up. Of course, your mileage may vary, but with my equipment, the sweet spot is at some kind of angle like this and you ease into it so slowly that this wheel only starts to contact the high spots at first and then you press in ever so gently at a relaxed rate until it's perfectly true. And as I've said, the added benefit is it also helps to true this up. A few more points to make about the construction. Note the ferrules here and here. In the video I tried to suggest this as I made the wrap but I wasn't explicit about it for, you know, time constraints. But I tried to let the individual strands come apart so that instead of a single twine, what you have is, what is that, four or five little strands? The finished product has a, let's say, a higher resolution. Don't just wrap like this. Try to twist and tease it apart so that it's as though you're wrapping with five strands at a time. Also, after the ferrule is completely wrapped and you're brushing on the char, the epoxy still has to be somewhat tacky. And that's kind of a trick that was implied by the video, that you can work with epoxy while it's still in that taffy stage. In fact, you can use it to your advantage while you're crafting things. The char will also keep the bristles of the brush from sticking to the tacky epoxy. And in a similar line of reasoning, when you coat the string with clay powder, it keeps your fingers from sticking to it. Don't worry, the cotton is very thirsty and it will still readily imbibe the epoxy, especially if you apply some heat to it. This one is the grip art that I ended up using for the video. And this was the earlier one. You can see that this one is stretched in its width along X, and that's to accommodate wrapping around the handle because a handle is a three-dimensional object. 
and the blueprint is just a two-dimensional representation of it. The drawings that are available to you will give you both. Well, it's about the love of the object, and I would encourage you to do it as well. When you see something that you want, make it. I, honestly, that's the underlying motivation for making the weird stuff that I make. That sometimes it requires a lot of patience, effort, tenacity, or even expense. The thing that gets you through it, the thing that motivates you more than anything, is just a desire to not have someone tell me, no, you can't have that. You can have anything you want. You just have to make it. See you on the next subject.